This first story was posted onto r slash creepy encounters called creepy woman that I encountered when I was working for an international airport. I don't know exactly where to start, but years after this incident, I had a flashback with all the details while talking to my girlfriend on the phone and telling each other our memories. After hours of reading people's memories on Reddit, I have something to share and I can't wait to see your reactions. This happened at the beginning of 2023. I, male 22 at the time, was working at a terminal attendant at one of the biggest airports in Europe. My job description was mostly to give directions to arriving and departing passengers in this airport as big as a city to solve their problems regarding visa and passport related issues. For some reason, I can't tell you exactly which airport it is, but you can probably guess from the details that I will give. Since the airport is really huge and in a very key location, it is one of the transfer points for passengers coming and going from Asia, Africa, Europe, and America. So it was in the nature of my job to encounter various strange types of people and events. I was working 12 hour shifts, some days at night, and some days during the day, and the area that I was working in was determined by daily assignments. The incident happened during my 12 hour night shift on the transfer floor from the airport. The common point where international passengers wait for passport control before picking up their luggage, and where the passengers of all incoming international flights flow. Actually, when we work, we are supposed to wait at a fixed point when passengers don't specifically call for us, but it was 3 o'clock at night, and since flights and passenger traffic slowed down at this time of night, I decided to patrol around a bit. I left my station and went to the gate of the only arrival flight at the time of night. I decided to wait there in case passengers needed help when the gate opened. After a while, the plane pulled up to the gate, the gate opened, and a lot of normal looking people walked out of the gate and into the transfer center. Except that woman. That strange looking woman who made me feel cursed by the cold January air. She was a brunette in her late 20s, covered in dirt and torn clothes. Her hair was missing in some places, and the hair that was there was rather unkept and, I think, a bit burnt. When she saw me in my uniform with unusually large pupils, she walked up to me, looking scared and confused. Excuse me, do you work here? I need help. Damn it, of course you need help. I wanted to take her arm because she was having trouble walking, but the smell emanating from her, don't judge, it was a normal sweat smell, but it smelled like she was already dead. It made my nose hurt and I immediately abandoned the idea. I sat her down on a seat reserved for passengers and I stood opposite of her and asked her in a calm voice how I could help her. I had a very bad experience, that's why I'm running away from there. I haven't eaten for days and I think there was something in the water that they gave me on the plane. Since I drank it, I don't feel well and my mind is fuzzy. I didn't find what she was saying convincing. I thought she was in some kind of mental breakdown because her gestures and intonations when she spoke were very strange. But I was also familiar with the aviation rules and I knew that something like this should be reported immediately to the police. When I told her this, she didn't like the idea and stood up and shook me by the shoulders and shouted, no police, never the police, dude. She started laughing, looking up the ceiling like there was something up there. The woman was making strange gestures with her hands, but her cheerful demeanor was broken by a sudden burst of crying. No police, they won't like it. They, the police, that's their job. Who said anything about cops? I'm talking about the people who did this to me. As she said this, she lifted up the burnt hair that had fallen on her forehead, and I saw one of the strangest things I've ever seen in my life. Look, I've seen a lot of strange tattoos because of the environment I've studied and lived in but this was different. Right in the center of her forehead was a tattoo that looked like the barcodes on the products in the grocery store with some numbers underneath. Here's an example of how the tattoo looked. At first, I thought it was just a strange fashion sense for aesthetic purposes, but her strange behavior in some documentaries I had seen made me think that it was a problem used by human T-R-A-F-F-I-C to mark people so that they could easily be identified and caught when they escaped. When she realized that I couldn't help her the way that she wanted, she at least wanted to use my phone. But I told her that she was not allowed to use my phone due to the airport security rules, and that she could use the payphones if she wanted to. Of course, she didn't have any money with her, and I was not allowed to give her any money, since she showed aggressive behavior toward me every time I insisted on talking to the police. I finally decided to do it secretly and bought her some food and water before going to the police. When I arrived at the police station on the transfer floor, the policemen were taking advantage of the calm of the night to rest. When I told them what had happened to me and pointed to the woman, they told me that she was just one of the refugees coming into our country. My country hosts so many illegal immigrants and refugees, 
it is normal for them to think like that, and that she was acting like that because she wanted us to let her enter illegally. They didn't take it very seriously, and unfortunately I had to leave without any solution. When I went back to the woman, I realized that she had not touched the food and water I had brought her, and repeatedly refused to consume them with a fear in her eyes. I decided to have a conversation with the woman so as not to be so judgmental, and when I asked her name, she gave me a very strange answer that I had never heard before. It was like a name from some ancient language, and even now I don't remember exactly what she said. When I asked her where she came from and where she was going, she said she didn't know. To get this information, I took her passport and her boarding pass from her hand. I don't remember exactly, but she was coming from an Asian country, and her next destination was not written on the boarding pass, so her ticket was valid only until here. I decided to end our conversation, which was not very productive, and leave her alone to observe from a distance. I had to go back to my station for some paperwork, and decided to take care of it in the meantime. Later that night, around 6am, my other colleague was due to arrive at the station to hand in my shift. I was going to exit through the door where they were going to enter the transfer center where we are, and before I left I decided to stop again on my way to see this strange female visitor. When I went up to her she was holding a book in her hand. It was a book with old covers and yellowed paper, but I didn't understand what was written in it until she pointed at me and called me over. Even then I didn't understand it. It was a book written in an alphabet I don't know in a language I don't know. I don't want you to think that I was making this up, but it was a book with strange figures of people and other drawings. The woman pointed to one of the drawings and said, this is how they do it. They do what like this? I'm confused, can you be a bit more specific? When I said that, she shook her head side to side laughing. She had an expression as if I wouldn't understand even if she explained it. I told her that a friend of mine would be arriving soon in my place, and that if she had any problems or needs, she could contact them as she wished. I gave her directions to the restroom where she could get food, the police station, and the ticket office. After a few seconds of looking at my face, she thanked me in tears and took my hand in both of hers and looked me in the eyes. I didn't know exactly what had happened to her, but at that moment my heart broke. I put my other hand over hers and nodded. It was time to leave when my friend who was coming behind me to take my place touched me and I introduced them to the woman and secretly informed about the situation. My friend told me that they were going to take special care of her. I said goodbye and I finished my shift for the day. When I woke up the next day, I texted my friend and asked them how she was doing. They told me that after I introduced her, they left to take care of another passenger and that they never saw her for the rest of the day. They said that when they asked the passport police and ticket offices, they told them that they were busy enough as it was and that they didn't pay that much attention to people and brushed him off. I never saw this woman on my next shift and I never heard from her again. Still gives me the goosebumps when I remember it. I would be interested in your comments on the incident if there's anything I missed or you want to ask. Let's meet in the comments. Thank you for reading. This next story was also posted onto r slash creepy encounters called creepy encounter near my home. So this happened around 21 years ago when I was around 9 years old but I still vividly remember that day. I was with my grandmother and her dog a big black Great Dane. We were walking on the side of a little country road in the middle of the woods, a 20 minute walk from my house. We used to come here for picking up chestnuts. At a point, the dog went a little further into the woods and I started to follow him. At the same time, a car arrived on the road and stopped. I looked at my grandma and she made me a sign to tell me to stay where I was. I saw her talking with the driver. He looked like a middle-aged man. From where I was, I couldn't hear exactly what they were saying, but I heard my grandma raise her voice. I saw the man open his car door. I was sure he was going to grab my grandmother. I was so scared. She screamed to me to run into the woods, but a big, dark, black shadow ran into the guy. It was the dog. I think he heard the panic in my grandma's voice, and that he understood that there was a danger. The guy got scared and quickly closed the door, then got out. I asked my grandma what happened. She just told me that this was a crazy man, and that we should go home through the woods and stay away from the road. She also told me to stay close to the dog. Thankfully, we got home and didn't see that man again. From this day, we never went picking up chestnuts in this area again, and we stopped to do walkings around the house for many years, and we never went walking anywhere else without a dog. I think that's also why I remember this day so precisely. Even if I never saw that man again, he left after him like a feeling of danger around our home for a very long time. A few minute encounter turned into years of fear. Fun fact, despite his size, the dog was usually a completely harmless dog who got scared of everything, even cats and chickens, but that day, he was the bravest dog on earth. This next story was posted onto Let's Not Me, it's called The Swaying Person. 
Right off the bat, I'd like to say that this incident is one of the few that have truly stuck with me. Although this took place in January of the previous year, it definitely keeps me awake at night. It seems surreal to me that so many weird things happen to people on a daily basis, and I never imagined them happening to me either. Anyway, I was staying abroad due to college, and there wasn't a single thing that had irked me or creeped me out. I lived in a relatively populated area, there was lots of young women in my apartment, and even older women, so you could say that I felt safe in my own home. Walking the streets was also safe since there was always people around. There were apartments, parks, houses, those full-time 7-Elevens, and small cafes. I'm pretty sure there was a small motel too. Regardless, it created a pretty decent image of the area. Although the university taught the lessons in English for all the foreign students, I still wanted to learn the language to respect and experience the culture. It was fun and I made quite a few friends in those classes. Well, one day I was walking to a convenience store from the class and I remember being quite dazed and tired. It was around 8pm, the class ended a while back but since I had the once in a lifetime leisure time, I decided to explore the place. I knew my way around and I was pretty confident about the routes and all, and as time passed, I eventually reached this giant road with some empty plots to the right. Don't get me wrong, it was a residential area and I could even hear noises from a couple of houses. Now this is a little weird, but there's a bunch of houses, but as you keep walking toward the city and all the hustle bustle, there's this entire secluded area of just roads and streetlights. The convenience store was about 4 kilometers away approximately. I was feeling uncomfortable and nervous too, because of the previous incident I had, so I decided to stop and look around. There was nothing, but I decided to start jogging further, while looking side to side and back a little too. Not even 30 seconds passed and I bumped into someone. I felt a feeling of dread rush over me and my hair just stood up. My palms even started shaking and I didn't even lift my head to see who it was. I apologized like crazy, simultaneously backing away and getting ready to fucking bolt out of there like if I was in the damn Olympics or something. The person came in front of me, started walking toward me in little steps, and started moving in this weird swaying motion. It was almost like a cartoon, and while swaying the person just said, What the fuck? What the? What are you? Are you okay? With this arrogant tone. I say person because I genuinely couldn't tell if this person was a man or woman. Their face was covered by a mask and they wore a large hoodie with sweatpants. The voice was sort of muffled but didn't sound masculine or feminine. The person started swearing and doing the weird swaying motion while reaching in their pant pocket. I saw a glimpse of something shiny and my instincts that so conveniently died out kicked in. I took the chance and fled the damn place. I went to the store and told the clerk. They called the police who found the two fucking shoes on the same spot. Along with the shoes was the mask apparently. I never found out who it was, what they wanted, and how I never saw them lurking around in the empty plots. There were no bushes and the light wasn't that scarce either, but I'm glad I'm safe. Although this happened a year ago, I still feel like I'm not completely safe. I don't know if it's the paranoia or something, but, but I've been having a really bad feeling since the beginning of the month. Even if I'm with other people or at home with my boyfriend, I feel like I have no privacy. Does anyone know what to do? This last story was also posted onto r slash let's not meet called getting chased by a man in the woods. So one night me and my friends were playing hide and seek in our hometown. We were probably like 13 at the time. So I went into a small area that is basically like a shortcut from the main road to the side road. I unfortunately went alone and didn't think of what could have happened. Remember, we were only 13 at the time and we didn't bring our phones with us, so if something happened to us, nobody would even know. So the first game started and I ran sprinting to the wood and area. The first 30 seconds were good. Disclaimer, we have a rule that we have to come to the checkpoint where we start and we have to save ourselves from not getting picked to search. After around 1 minute, I start hearing footsteps. I say, hello, are you one of my friends? And something that was there didn't say anything, so I started backing out. Fortunately, the wooden area has a main route and two side ones that I could have run either way. I start backing out and from nowhere, the man just appears from the woods and starts sprinting at me while saying, I'm gonna catch you in a creepy and eerie way, like a kidnapper. Fortunately, I trained football, soccer, so I knew I could definitely outrun him or at least make him tired. I sprint all the way through the woods with the only light being the moonlight, and after two minutes he gave up. I continued sprinting and got myself all the way to the checkpoint and told all my friends what had just happened. Of course, no one believed me, but I didn't care since I knew it was real. To this day, I still don't know who or what tried to catch me that night, but for sure I knew if I wasn't a sports guy, the outcome would have been very, very different.